Good morning. So good to be with you guys today. Wasn't the At The Movie series amazing? Wasn't that awesome? I, 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 know, I know you were a little bit nervous coming into it, and, and uh, especially when you showed up that first week, the donuts weren't here. Welcome back, donuts, today. I said, I'm not getting on the stage until we get donuts back here. So, I don't, you know, I'm afraid of what it does to people. Anyway, our pastors did such a great job on that series and pulling those movies in. And, man, it just captivated you. And, uh, but, boy, what, uh, what a great series we had. And, and so we're, uh, we're doing this new series through August, and we're just calling it a la carte. And basically what we've done is we've just let each pastor pick whatever topic that they want to talk about. And uh, I'm, I'm lucky here because I get to be here twice and so uh, I'm here the first of the, of the month, and I'm going to be here the last of the month. And you don't want to miss it because Gail's going to help me preach. So come on now. Yeah, that's going to be a good time there. So I'm actually going to just, when she gets up here, I'm just going to walk off. No, I'm just kidding. Just kidding. It'll be good to have her up here with me, and we're going to talk about marriage, so it will be good. And uh, anyway, uh, today, what I want to talk about, I, I want to talk about something that, I, that probably all of you have heard a message on, you've heard talked about, uh, and I, I just thought, you know, what's going on today, the things that are happening today, this is something we need to pay attention to. Uh, because there's just a lot of bad stuff going on, a lot of division and arguing and all, all kinds of stuff. And so today, I want to talk about our words. Yeah, whether, whether we say them or we type them, they're our words. Whether we say it out loud or we're typing it on social media somewhere, uh, I want to talk about our words and, and the power of them. And, uh, you know, in my lifetime, Words have changed a lot. I mean, I remember a time where bad, the word bad meant you were bad. Now they go, you're bad, that means you're good. <laughs> you know, you're like, or, or they're like, you know, there used to be a time where you say, they'd say, you know, you're sick, that means you weren't feeling good. Now you go, with, they say, hey, you're sick, that means you're good. <laughs> I mean, that's where we've come in, in, in a short time that words have just changed and the meanings of them have changed and how we say things. Matter of fact, I saw this video about the, the here, just, just watch, watch this video. This cracks me up. Okay, let's settle this. No, yeah means yeah. Yeah, no means no. Yeah, no for sure means I'm down. Yeah, no, yeah means maybe I'll do it. No, yeah, no means there's not a chance I'll do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah means absolutely not. And lastly, pop is not soda. Double facts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 means absolutely not. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. It's kind of, you know, it's, at my age, it's kind of scary to talk because you're not sure what these younger people are talking about anymore and what you might say, and they're like, oh, that's offensive. It's like, what? So anyway, words have changed, and it's just different. But I tell you what, there are some scriptures that talk about our words that makes it just almost takes your breath away. Uh, let, me, let me read this first one to you, James chapter 3. He says this, When we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal or take ships, for example. Although they are so large, they are driven by strong winds. They are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants it to go. Likewise, this is what he compares it to. He compares it to horses and ships. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but yet it makes great boast. Consider what a great force it is set on consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue also is a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. Hang on, listen to this. It corrupts the whole body, sets the whole course of one's life on fire, and is itself set on fire by hell. It's like, James, <laughs> let's be honest with us, James. Let's, <laughs> what does the tongue do? What does our words do to us? And so, so James just comes right out and says, listen, our, our tongues can lead us in some really, really dark places. And, uh, you know, I, I've, heard it, I've heard it said like this before, some never learn to control the tongue only by the sound of the closing of a casket. <laughs> you know, because some just don't until they're passed away. They just never learn how to control the tongue. And, and James says it's hard. It's really hard to 
get our tongues under control. Proverbs 18, 21, and I'm, I'm sure that most of you have heard this. The tongue has the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat its fruit. And I think many times we, we hear or have heard that scripture, but how, long, how many times have we stopped to think about that? That everything we say is either speaking life or it's speaking death. And uh, I, I was thinking about this and I thought, you know, that's so true. If you go back to the very beginning to Genesis, and in Genesis chapter 1, you know, it says right there, the scripture won't be behind me, but it says in the beginning, in the very beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And it says that the earth was formless and empty and darkness was over the surf, surface of the deep and the Spirit of God was hovering over the water. So it was dark. There, were, there, were, there was absolutely nothing here. Nothing. And then in verse 3 in Genesis chapter 1 it says this, And God said, God said, God said, let there be light and there was light. Now, come on, this is, this is showing us from the very beginning the power of words, that God even created everything by speaking it. You know, you'd think he would, I don't know, get some mud and, and form something, and, but no, he didn't. He just said, let there be light, and boom, there was light. And, it said, and then in verse 4, it goes on, it said, and God saw the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness and then it says this, God called the light. God called it. He called it. He called the light day. Again, he speaks these things. What power there is from the very beginning. And yet sometimes we don't even think about the power of our words. And so God used words to bring life to bring light into existence, to build up, to to create and he speaks into darkness, and light fills that darkness. The power of, of speaking, the power of, of words. Matter of fact, if you go and look in chapter 3, this is after everything's been created, because you know, you know Genesis, what it keeps saying, and, and God said, let there, and God said, let there, and God said. And, and before the end of the, the chapter there, we have everything. Everything all was spoken into existence by God saying. God spoke it into existence. And then you get over to chapter 3, and this is the part where you got Adam and Eve, and now the serpent's coming in. And it's easy, it's interesting to see this because God spoke all, all life, spoke life into existence, and now you're going to see where the serpent comes in and he speaks death. The serpent speaks death. Uh, in verse 3, it says, Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals of the Lord had made. And he said to the woman, he said, he used words. The serpent used words. And he said to the woman, did God really say? Did God really say that? Did God really say you must not eat from the tree of the garden? And here we see the serpent, he speaks, he, he attacks what God had, what God had said. The serpent, the enemy, speaks against what God said. And so he uses words not to speak life, but to speak death. And I'm like, I'm thinking about this again, and I'm thinking, this is just amazing that words have the power of life and death, and it's like it has been wired into our universe from the very beginning. That God's words... Matter of fact, we, just, we were just singing it. The very first song today is talking about standing on his what? On his words. That we stand on what God has said. We stand on his promises. And there's such power in words. And uh, our words are, are more powerful than we even realize. And I think we just forget about it sometimes. And we just start talking. And we just start, we just start spewing things out. And so let's look at the power of words for a moment. And notice that how the words can build up and uh, words can create, but they can also tear down. They can inspire or they can discourage. They can heal or they can hurt. Do, do you remember the old saying? I haven't heard it too much lately, but the old saying that probably we said as kids, stick and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. That's a lie. 
I don't know about you. I've lived long enough. I'd rather get, I'd rather get hit by sticks and stones <laughs> huh? because words hurt. Words hurt. I mean, there's, there's words that, that, that I heard a long time ago that I still deal with. They hurt. I don't know who made that up. I mean, they, they obviously didn't go through elementary school. <laughs> you know, that's just not true. Matthew 12, listen to this, what he says. This is what Jesus said. He says, but I tell you that everyone, let's just skip the scripture. I don't like it. <laughs> no, let's not. He says, but I tell you that everyone will have to give an account on the day of judgment for every empty word they have spoken. For as by your words you'll be acquitted, and by your words you will be condemned. There's life and death in the power of the tongue. And that's a sobering thought, isn't it? That our words matter deeply. Mark Twain once said, It's better to keep your mouth closed and let people think you're a fool than open it and remove all doubt. <laughs> It's just such power in our words, and, and uh, you know, we all know someone that could use that advice. Maybe, maybe it's us. Maybe this morning we all need to go, I, I know I do. I know I just, I, I get negative sometimes, speak negative, and, uh, and I just need to think about it, you know, because words that destroy are, are like swift feet. They, they're like, it's like juicy rumors. They, they, take a, they take a life of their own, don't they? I mean, rumors can just can just go and go and go. And uh, I, I remember I, I I worked at Fleetwood over here for ten years, and and I was I was head of uh, uh, the department. We received all the all the imp- the materials that would come in, and then we distribute it. and And we always knew when there would be a shutdown. Uh, if those Fleetwood uh, employees that we used to work at Fleetwood, we always used to get weeks off of time for shutdowns, and and. Uh, and I, I remember talking to some of my guys. I said, let's see how fast we can start a rumor. And, uh, and I wrote, because and, we were the first ones to usually know about the shutdowns. And I just wrote a note on my desk, shut down this, this date and this day. And it wasn't, it wasn't an hour later it was going through the factory. It just, it just spread like wildfire. And it's just like that's, that's what rumors can do. Rumors can, they, they just spread like wildfire, because we want to share the juicy news. And, you know, these fiery words, though they're, they're though small sometimes, they can destroy a whole community. They can destroy the reputation of a person. And then the other side, the words can encourage, and they can praise, and they can build up. Words can be a tree of life, and words can reconcile people and bring peace Matter of fact, Jesus says, blessed are the peacemakers. And that you're, you're a peacemaker by what you speak, the words that we say. And words can, words can make marriages sweet and families strong and churches healthy. And words can give hope to the hopeless and advance understanding and, and spread the gospel about Jesus. So the question this morning is this. What drips from your lips? I want you to think about it for a, for a minute this morning. What, what's the words that drip from your lips? Is it gossip? Is it truth? Is it encouragement? Backbiting? Negativity? Positivity? Anger? Praises? What is it that normally drips from your lips? And uh, so what I just want to share today is just a few practical tips um, about our words, some things maybe we can do and look at. And, and uh, it's just hard because we're so, we're so quick to talk, aren't we? We're just so fast to say things. And, and I think the first thing is if we could just think, if we could just think, before we say something, if we could, if we could ask ourselves, and, and maybe you've heard this, a, a good thing to think about before we speak is the word think. And here's some things. Th- the T is, is it truthful? Is what I'm about to say truthful? Is it, is it H, is it helpful? Is it I, is it inspiring? Is it N, and is it necessary? <laughs> That's a great question right there. What if we just stopped with that one? 
What if we just paused for a second and said, is it necessary for me to say this? <laughs> It'd probably get a lot quieter, wouldn't it? <laughs> is it necessary? And K, is it kind? And just some good things to think about. And, uh, you know, and if it doesn't, if it doesn't pass the think test, maybe, maybe it's just best to be left unsaid. Or, or, or maybe not now. I remember I, uh, I, got, I got saved in a small Methodist church out here on the Bell Fountain Road. And it's just a country church and just a few people going there, a lot of farmers and just, just family. And, and there was a guy there. His name was Dave. And uh, I, when I first met him, I thought, man, this guy's different. He's really strange. Because you would talk to him, and he would always do this. I, I, when I say always, it was probably always. You'd say something to him, and he would go, just enough to make you uncomfortable. <laughs> and then he would speak. It, and and I, learned, I learned that what he was doing was he would stop to think before he spoke all the time. And he would have that uncomfortable pause right there, but he was always thinking about what he was about to say. And I, and I was just always amazed by that, just always amazed by what he said. And I was also ready to hear what it was that he had to say. James 1, 19 and 20 says, Brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. So we should be slow to speak, slow to speak. And I think that's some of our problem. I think that's some of our problem on social media that we're just so quick to get out some kind of judgment, some sort of thing that we're saying, and we're just putting it out there. And Psalms 141.3 says, Set a guard over my mouth, Lord. Keep watch over the door of my lips. What a prayer. Lord, set a guard over this thing. I mean, that's got to be my prayer when I drive. <laughs> Lord, set a guard o- over my lips. Don't let me complain about the driving of the other people. They're just learning, right? <laughs> you know, you just never know the whole story. But, uh, you know, in that, in that holding our tongues and waiting, I, I've heard this said, never trust your words when your heart is bitter. Never trust our words when our heart is bitter. And this, listen to this, hush until you heal. One of the times that we really need to hold our words is when our hearts hurt, is when we're bitter, because that's when we say some things that are going to get out there. And, uh, you know, the, the Bible talks about how our heart dictates uh, how, how we act. It dictates what we say. And Solomon uh, talks about this in Proverbs 4.23. says, above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. And the words that we say are going to flow from here. In, uh, in Matthew, he talks about that, that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And so when we're, when we're hurt, when we're bitter, when we're mad, is, is that's the time that we're, we're shooting out the things that then, then we're trying to reel them in. But Solomon talks about this, and for some of, uh, you know, a follower of Jesus, this is talking about guarding our heart. It means to, to pay close attention to the direction of his affections, uh, of where we're moving. Are, are, we, uh, are we more uh, captivated by the world and, and, uh, and speaking the language of the world and the anger and the backbiting and all that, or are we allowing God to do a work in our heart which will cause our mouth than to speak. And so basically in thinking about what we're saying, we just need to be aware of our words. The second thing that I would uh, uh, ask for us to do is this. What if we, what if we focused on encouraging? What if, what if we would just encourage? What if we would purposely, and I'm going to use the word seek, what if we would seek to make our words a fountain of life? Uh, you, where do you get that? Proverbs 10, 11 says, The mouth of the righteous is a fountain of life, but the mouth of the wicked conceals violence. And I, I read that verse, and, and you know the first thing that came to my mind? <laughs> I know you're going to think I'm crazy, but that's all right, you already do. I thought of a chocolate fountain. I mean, anything you stick into a chocolate fountain makes it taste better. I mean, you ever, had, you ever went to those, you go to a wedding or whatever, and they got all this stuff, and you just dip it in chocolate. Hey, as long as it's got chocolate on it, that's good. 
And what if the, our words were like that? What if our words were like, were like a, a fountain of life? That it just brought life to wherever we go and whoever we talk to. That it brought life to them. What if we would seek to encourage more than to critique? (laughs) What if we would seek to encourage more than to critique? Boy, we're so quick to critique, aren't we? We're so quick to judge of why they're doing that and, and why they're being like that. What if we would seek to encourage? 1 Thessalonians 5.11 says, Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up just in the fact you are doing. I mean, think about just last week. How much time did you spend encouraging somebody? Somebody. You know, it's hard, isn't it? When I, when I was thinking about this stuff today, I thought, you know what? That's, that's hard. It's hard to think about encouraging somebody. Let's just be honest, but it's so easy to critique. So It just flows so easy. And yet if I go, you know what? I want to encourage somebody today. I'm like, okay, this, guy, this might feel weird. But we need to encourage. Seek opportunities to speak kind Tender-hearted words. Ephesians 4.32 says, Be kind and compassionate to one another. Be kind and compassionate. Forgiving each other just as Christ God forgave you. What if we would seek for opportunities? Where's an opportunity for me to speak some encouraging, some kind-hearted words to somebody? And then Ephesians 4.29, Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth. But only what is helpful for building up others according to their needs that it may benefit those who are listening. This is what what he's encouraging us to do. Don't let any unwholesome talk come out of our mouths. How much? No, 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 let any. He says no, no, none, none. No no unwholesome, unwholesome talk coming out of our mouths, but only what is helpful. Boy, that's where we have to think. Is this helpful? Is this necessary. So what if we would just seek to speak words that are building up and giving grace to the hearer? The third one is this. The third thing that I want to talk about is this. What if we extended grace? And where I got, I I read this scripture in Ephesians, Ephesians 1, 7 and 8, and this, is, this translation is the good news translation, and, and, I, and I use that just because I like the words that he uses here. It says, for by the blood of Christ we are set free. That is, our sins are forgiven. How many are thankful for that? All right, a few of you. <laughs> our sins have been forgiven. That's the grace of God. Our sins have been forgiven. And look what he says. How great is the grace of God which he gave to us in such large measure. The grace of God is in such large measure. Do you ever think of how big that is? How huge the grace of God is? I, 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 was, I was thinking about this. I love this scripture that his grace is it's, it's just poured in. In such large measure, the grace that God shows me. And I thought, you know what? We have to look at how we handle the grace of God. Because I think the grace of God needs to be given right back out. I'm going to show you that here in just a minute. That we give it right back out. But I have this lame illustration that I want to show you that, that it just came to my mind. And I thought, here's how we, here's how we, we kind of treat the grace of God. Like, like, like a pack of peanut M&M's. This is just the single pack. These are so small anymore. I mean, like, like this is like one handful for me. They're gone. I'm not sharing these with you. If I buy this pack, it's mine. And you know what? That's how we treat the grace of God, I think. Like, that's mine. The grace of God is mine. And I don't think that God shows us his grace and has given us his grace for us to keep it to ourselves. I think he's given us the share pack. I'm still not sure I'm going to share these with you. (laughs) And matter of fact, this isn't even called the share pack. This is called the family pack. They have the share pack. I picked it up. I thought, that's still not big enough. 
It still does not illustrate what I want to show. I can swear when I was a kid, these were pillow sized. But maybe, maybe I was just thinking differently. I don't know. But I thought, you know, our, the, the grace of God has given, been given to us in such big measure that we should, we should be sharing. We should be sharing the grace of God of what God has done in our life and, the, and, and how he has forgiven our sins. And we should be like him. And showing that grace, extending grace. And I think about this verse and how large of a measure God's grace is. And that we should be given that same grace, the same measure. When it goes to showing other people grace, we shouldn't go, well, I might be able to give you one. Not a green one, but I might give you one. But you know what? When we realize that the more we give, the more we receive. Do you know that's how God works? We give out of the abundance of God. The Bible says our cup overflows, and it's that overflowing that our cup doesn't get empty because God's grace is new every morning. Every morning your pack's full again. Every day that you can share, you have the share size, that we share the same measure. Our words are sharing grace with others. And, God, and, and let, me just, let me just read here what God's grace is. God's grace is his unmerited favor. This is what we should be given out. It's his unmerited favor and kindness towards mankind. It is God's generosity, his love, his mercy that's extended to people despite their shortcomings and sins. It's undeserved. And we're to share that in our words and way we way we treat people and the things we say. Matter of fact, I, I, there, there's, there are several verses in the New Testament that use the words, as I, as I. We're to do it the same way. We're to be just like Christ. Listen, I'm just going to rattle. They won't be on the screen. I'm just going to rattle off several of them. John 13, 34, a new command I give you, love one another. Just as I have loved you, you must love one another, just as John 15, 12, my command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Ephesians 4, 32, be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as I have forgiven you. Ephesians 5, 2, and walk in the way of love just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Ephesians 5.25, husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. Philippians 2.5, in your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. Colossians 3.13, bear with each other and, and forgive one another. If any of you have a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord has forgiven you. And 1 John 2, 6, whoever claims to live in him must live as Jesus did. And this gives us the example. Just those examples of, as, as we're matching our life up to his should speak a lot of grace. We should be extending a lot of grace. See, here's the deal. We're either extending grace or we're disgracing. Extending grace Or degracing. And I want you to think about it this morning. Are you extending grace to your spouse? The words that you say, are you extending grace or are you disgracing? I want you to think about your family. Are you extending grace to your family just as, just as, or are we degracing? Our family. How about your friends? Are we extending grace? Or are we disgracing? How about our co-workers? How about those people that you work around? Don't be an undercover undercover Christian. Let everybody know. Let your light shine. And your light shines by the words that you say. Here's the big one. How about to yourself? 
Are you extending grace to yourself? Or are you degracing yourself? Why don't you think this morning, how do you speak to yourself? Are you speaking life to yourself? Or are you speaking death? Because I, I think that it has to start there. I, th- I think we have to realize how we're even speaking to ourselves and what we're saying to ourselves and are we extending grace to ourselves before we can extend grace to others. How are you you talking to yourself? Are you disgracing yourself? Are you you making it hard on yourself? Would God speak to you that way? Remember, but only what is helpful for building up others according to their needs. That includes you. How you speak to yourself. Words have the power of life and death. And you know, there's either one of two people two types of people out there. I think, there's, I think there's pumpers and there's poppers. I think there's those people that pump you up. You know what? You know, so, you know there's, there's, there's certain people that after the sermon, they'll come up and they'll go, Pastor, good sermon. Good job, even if it wasn't. They'll tell me that. I like those people. It's okay to tell me that because there's poppers too. Come through the same, right through, right through the atrium. Oh, you should have did this. Oh, you should have said that. So it's okay to, put, to build each other up. It's okay if we give each other a big head because there will be a popper at work tomorrow for you. So, yeah, yeah, it's okay to build each other up today because tomorrow when you go into work, somebody will pop your bubble. Their words will go, ping, so much for that. Isn't that the way it is? Or maybe you're going to get in on Facebook today and you're going to get your, your hopes popped. There's either poppers or pumpers. Let's be pumpers. And, you know, I, I just, I, extending this grace, I know it's so hard. And I, I know, I know that, that there's even some of you in here, you're in a hard position today. And, and you, you just want to you, you wanna say, you know what, I, there's this situation going on, and I just can't extend grace to them. And all I can tell you is take that to the Lord. I, don't, I, don't, I didn't write it. I'm just reporting it, but I'm saying that's the way through, is if we would extend grace just as he has shown it to us. So our words have incredible power. They can lift up or destroy. They can bring life. They can bring death. So my encouragement today for me and for all of us is let's strive to use our words wisely with humility and love. Remember, the words that you speak today could change someone's life tomorrow. Now listen, I know a lot of people just go, you know what, that's why I don't say much. That's why I just kind of keep to myself. You know, I don't think that's the answer either. I think this is a method that God has given us. I think your testimony is something that God has given you to share. I think the goodness of God in your life is what God has given you to share, that we need to speak as often as much as we can. So my challenge to you is just to think about your words today. Let's pray.